In this video, I'm going to show you how I upload images to Cloudflare's R2, and I'm going to use pre-signed put requests to do that. So I'm going to use Next.js and server components, but once you understand how this works, then you can implement this in any technology you like. So the first thing to understand is what is a pre-signed put request and what is it an alternative to? So there's two main ways to upload images to a server or to upload files of any description. So the first one is directly through the server. So let's say we have this user here and this user has a file on their computer and we want to get that image over to Cloudflare. So we want to get the image from the user over to Cloudflare. And in between here, we have our server. So one way of doing this would be to send the file directly from the user to our server. We can do some validation there, and then we can send the file up into Cloudflare. So this is a perfectly legitimate way to handle file uploads. However, it does come with some of its own issues. The biggest issue is that if you're sending a file from the user through your server, you now pay for the bandwidth from downloading the image on this side and then uploading the image here. So if that's a problem, maybe you're uploading really large files, you might wanna look for an alternative. The other issue is that if you don't handle the streaming properly, you might save the image or all of the image in memory. And if you're uploading say hundreds of five megabyte images, that can start to consume all of your memory. So an alternative to this is pre-signed put requests. So instead of sending the image straight from the user up into the server, we're going to send a request to the server that says, hey, I want to upload this image. And in that request, we're going to have some data about the image, like the image type, or rather the file type. The fact that it's an image doesn't really matter the file size, and maybe a file name. We're going to send this request to the server. The server's gonna say, okay, you can upload this image and you're gonna have to do it yourself. So to do that, I'm going to send you a URL and then you can put your image to this URL here. So then the user uploads the image so they do put to the pre-signed URL. And then all of a sudden, this file doesn't even touch your server. It just goes straight from the user up into Cloudflare. So this also comes with its own set of issues, mainly around security, but I'm gonna show you in this video how you can sort of get around those or make this as secure as possible. So I can give you a little demo of how this works. So I have these two image components here and we're going to select an image. Then you can see here in the network, we go to edit, and this is just a server component. So if we have a look at the payload here, you can see that I'm sending in the listing ID. I'm going to send in a name for the image, and I'm going to send in the size and the image type. So we're gonna use this data for validation more than anything else. Then this will send back a pre-signed URL, and then if we have a look here, you can see we have an options request. This options request sends back a 204, no content, which basically says, yes, you can upload this image. One thing to note here is this access control allow origins is set to my logo host port 3000, but this URL here is actually a Cloudflare URL, and I'm gonna show you how to configure that. Then we're going to send the put request, and this URL here is the URL that our server sent back to the client. And you can see here we have our payload and our image is going to be in that payload. Now, if we come over to Cloudflare and we have a look in our bucket, you can see this DOM J01, that is going to be the image name. So I've named my image after the listing. So you can see here, I have the ID of this listing and that is part of security. So I'm gonna go in here and then I can see this cover image here. And then I can copy the URL for that. And then you can see that this is the image that we uploaded. Okay, so the first thing to do when you wanna set this up is to come into Cloudflare's R2 and create a bucket. So once you create a bucket, you're going to see your account ID here, and that's really important. You need to store that in an environment variable. 
then you need to create some access tokens. So you can see I've created two sets of access tokens here. And then I have this bucket. An optional piece of configuration is to set the domain. So if we go into settings, you can see I have a domain connected here. It's really simple to set this up. The other thing is you need to set up this cause policy. So you can copy this one pretty much. And I have the allowed origins. And that's why in this request here, you can see in the response headers, we have this access control allow origins. This is really important for cause. We also have allowed methods. So we're going to allow one method and that is put, but if you want to create pre-signed get requests, then you're also going to need to add get in here. And then I have allowed headers. I probably don't need this star. Probably just set this to content type. And then we have exposed headers e tag. So one thing about the allowed origins is you probably want to make this a little bit more tight. So you don't want to have a star in here. You're going to want to put in the domain that you're going to allow files to be uploaded from. Okay, so once you have Cloudflare configured, we can dive into the code. So it's important to know that Cloudflare's R2 basically uses the same protocol as Amazon's S3. And that allows us to use AWS SDKs for all of our image uploads or dealing with R2 in any capacity. So the first thing to do is to set up your S3 client and your S3 client comes from this package here, the AWS SDK and client S3. And for the endpoint, you need to put in your Cloudflare account ID. And that was the account ID that I showed you earlier that you can get from up here. Then you need to put in your access ID and your access key. And that comes from your tokens here. So you need to create a new set of tokens. If you keep getting 403s when you try to upload a image, make sure that you check the access key and access ID are correct because the error message is going to be a little bit confusing because it's going to tell you that you have a cause error. The reason for that is because if you send it to an account where it doesn't exist, so if you get these two wrong, then your cause policy is not going to apply. And so then your browser is going to tell you that it's a cause issue, but it's actually a 403. It's an authentication issue. Okay, and so here is the meat of what we're doing. So if we have a look at this image upload component, I'm using Mantine UI, and I'm just using the drop zone component here. So on drop, I have this handle drop. Then I'm going to get the files out of this files array, and I'm only allowing one file upload. So I'm just gonna get the zeroth index of that. Then I'm going to set a preview of that image, and this is just setting some state in React. The reason for that is because when we have a look at this component, you can see that it changes the cover image here or the background image of the component with a preview of the image. And then we're going to call our handle drop file. Now this might look a little bit weird. And the reason this looks weird is because handle drop file is a function that I'm using ZSA. So, have a look at this. This is using ZSA, and this is basically just a way to create procedures with Next.js server components, or Next.js server actions rather. So this is basically just checking that the user is authenticated and the user owns the listing that they're trying to upload an image for. And this is all part of security and making sure that our file uploads are secure. So you can't upload a file to this application unless you are authenticated and unless you're uploading a specific image for a specific listing, and it's going to check that you are the owner of that listing. So these are just things to be aware of when you're using these pre-signed put requests, make sure that you're limiting where you can be attacked um, and you can do things like authentication, making sure they own a particular resource and things like that to protect yourself. So the reason that this is returning an array is because we're using this ZSA procedure here. So inside of this server action, I'm going to pass in the listing ID, then I'm going to pass in a name, and my names can only be, if we have a look at the form here, the name can only be cover, and it can only be thumbnail. So you could get the name from the image that the user uploads if you wanted to. In my use case, I don't really need to do that because they can only have two specific images on a listing. The next thing I'm passing in is the file size and then the file type. 
So these are important. So take note and I'll get into what these do when we go into the actual action. Then we're going to get back our pre-signed URL and then we can just put our image to that URL. So I'm using Axios here. I was using fetch, but I wanted this progress bar and this was just much easier to do with Axios. So I'm going to put to that URL, I'm going to put my file in the body and I'm going to set the content type to the actual files type. And then I'm just going to set my progress. And the reason for that is because you can see this progress bar here. If I throttle my network, let's say slow 3G, and then we upload a file, you can see that we get this progress bar here once it starts uploading. Okay, so let's dive into the action now. So I'm doing some input validation here. If you're familiar with TRPC, this ZSA is a lot like TRPC. Then we're going to get our input and then we're going to get the file size. So we're going to check the file size. So we're going to create a limit here of five megabytes. And if the file size is above five megabytes, then we're just going to throw an error. So I know what you're thinking. They could just create a pre-signed URL for a file that's smaller than five megabytes and then use that URL to upload a file that's actually really big. So the cool thing about using the AWS S3 protocol is that we can set this content length here and this is going to be our size and then we can set our content type here. And when you upload the image, Cloudflare is going to say, is the file's length exactly the same as what's in this content length here? And if it's not, then we're going to reject the upload. So in theory, the user can never upload an image that is more than five megabytes because we've set this size here. And then the same as the file type. They can only upload this file type. I'm not doing any checks on this file type here. I probably should say if file type's not equal to one of these, then we can throw an error. So now they can only upload JPEGs and PNG images. And I'm going to construct an image URL, and this is going to be the URL of the image. In my case, this image URL is really predictable. If you're using the file's name, then you could tack on the file's name here. We're going to create the pre-signed URL and get pre-signed URL comes from this package here, AWS SDK S3 request pre-signer. And these, I don't know why AWS has so many different packages, um, but yeah, this one just makes it really easy to create a pre-signed URL. We pass in our S3 instance, we pass in a command, and this command is this put object command. If you were going to make a pre-signed get request, then this would be get object command. Then we're going to say that this pre-signed URL expires after 3,600 seconds. So that's pretty short. You can set this to an hour or whatever, but the browser is going to do the upload here straight away. So this can actually be pretty short. Then I'm just going to log out the URL and then I'm going to return the pre-signed URL and the image URL so I can actually save it on the form. So that's a basic overview of how I'm doing pre-signed put requests with Cloudflare's R2. If you want to see some more videos about how I'm doing different things inside of this application, maybe about this ZSA, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.